Hey everyone, Chris here from Friendly Frenzy Games, and today we're going to talk just a little bit about a game that we have not played in a little while called Dredge. Now if you didn't know, Dredge just released a second major update a few days ago on July 6th. This is completely free if you already own the game. Um, it's really kind of plugged to increase the exploration in the game with additions of random encounters with wildlife, a new passive mode for threatless fishing, as well as a photo mode. But really the main reason that we went back is to collect the 10 new aberrations as we're completionists at our core. And this is really what was most exciting for us, especially having previously 100% completed the game a few months before. So now that we've put this video together, uh, we really wanted to kind of highlight and review some of these new additions to let you know whether or not it's worth reinstalling. If, like us, you've completed the game already, or just let it lie and wait for a little bit more. In short, really, we would probably recommend the latter. Leave it, wait, as, I mean, we were really able to complete all of this new content in under an hour of playtime, and honestly, it doesn't really add a whole lot of value if you've previously completed this. If you're still working your way through your first playthrough of Dredge, however, this update will very likely make the environment feel even more lively, which should add to the enjoyment of completing the game for the very first time. So if you've been watching this a little bit here, you've seen that we've had some clips rolling of our first few encounters with some of the wildlife. Um, obviously this is just what we've come across. By the sounds of it, there's um, you know, some sea life, there's some new fish, there's some wildlife, birds, a whole bunch of stuff. We've really only come across a few in the water. So not 100% um, what all was added, but you can see here that we came across almost like a drunk shark that didn't seem to really move until it took a nose dive and sank. We came across a beluga whale that was, you know, really nice looking and huge. And we also came across a pod of orca whales. So these are all beautiful additions to the game's already visually appealing aesthetic. But it feels like a huge miss in that the wildlife that we encountered really didn't interact with us. Now I didn't expect the whales to come and sink us or anything, but it just the sightings all felt very static. Even though they were visually appealing, they just felt very static and didn't really um, have a whole lot of in involvement, really. Um, speaking out on missed opportunities, I think the game really touts as soon as you log in the addition of this photographer NPC. Now the location of this NPC doesn't start out map uh, marked on your map initially, you are given a few clues as you speak to some of the other NPCs and they're going to let you know the general direction of where you can find this NPC. So we spent a little bit of time cruising around um, the southern shore of Greater Merrill and we ended up pinpointing the NPC's location on the map just here. It's actually just on a small island south of Blackstone Isle and a little west of Ingfell. You're going to need to do a short item retrieval quest here in order to unlock the camera ability in your ability wheel. But again, there's no real incentive to get out and take pictures of the landscapes and new wildlife encounters in the game. Perhaps this may be something that they build a little later on in releases, um, but having a photo album is something that we thought, um, even if it was modeled very closely to that of the encyclopedia and its entries, it would have at least helped make this new edition feel a little bit more integrated and even remotely worthwhile. This brings us though now to why we really came back in the first place, the 10 new fish to catch. Now, really to preface this, we weren't expecting the addition of any new steam achievements to go along with collecting these new fish, but we did want to collect them just for the joy of continuing to complete this game, because honestly, every little bit of time that we get to spend with it, we really do enjoy it. As you're able to see here, as soon as you log into the game, the encyclopedia Entries have increased from a total of 128 to 138, and all of these are aberrations. And aberrations, again, if you don't know, they are the mutated versions of specific fish. So if you've seen our short on how to almost guarantee these versions of fish each time you're going to these disturbed waters, you know that really they're pretty easy to collect by simply using your atrophy ability once you've gotten through enough of the campaign um, or the story mode to be able to unlock it. So basically, we're going to just replicate the same system here, pick a new fish in the encyclopedia to go after, and then use what's known about their location, species, and time of day to get you in their general area. Now with this, you can look for glowing disturbed water. If it's that specific fish, you're going to have a chance at catching this specific aberration anyways. But we use the spyglass almost probably too much. 
but it really does help to identify both the disturbed water and the glowing water. Um, it's going to let you know what species of fish is in that area. And then with this, you can just simply use the atrophy skill as soon as you see the correct fish type. So we got the new aberration versions on our first try each time. This is maybe because we've already completed the previous entries and the game might elect to give you what you're missing instead of what you've already collected, but we can't really confirm this. Not sure if it's an RNG thing or again, maybe the game's set up to just give you what you don't have first and then go from there. But another thing we can't necessarily confirm is how or if these new aberrations affect the steam achievements for collecting all fish. So example, like aberration attractor or master angler, you might need to collect now all 138 in order to complete these achievements, or maybe it hasn't been adjusted and you'll just need to catch the original 128. And if you do have to catch the original 128, there really isn't anything now that denotes what's kind of new versus what's um, original as they've kind of mixed the entries up. It's not like all of the new additions are added to the end of the encyclopedia. The encyclo encyclopedia, sorry. They're kind of just mixed in there with the other entries now. So not exactly sure how this is going to affect the achievements, but can definitely see why it would kind of cause a little bit of scratched heads a little later. So if you do have any information on this, definitely let us know in the comments and we can pin it. Um, but really, by the end of this video, if you stick around that long, you'll see how we collected each of the new aberrations. You can see what they look like, how and where we found them. And we've also gone through and just pinpointed some of the specific locations on the map that we found for sunfish and moonfish locations, as these are easily um, the hardest to find in this new batch of fish. And that's simply just because they're oceanic and they don't really have any given area. You um, really just need to kind of find them on like the outskirts of the map in again, not in any specific area. And they aren't all that hard, or sorry, they aren't all that easy to come by. They're not like super rare fish or anything by any means, but each one is going to be like, you can't find a sunfish at night and you can't find a moonfish during the day. So that even limits their spawns a little more. But again, Check towards the end of the video and we will have some pinpointed locations there. But again, just wanted to put this together for you guys while this update is still relatively new. For any new players, I could totally see why this um, update would just further increase your enjoyment of the game as you rip through your playthrough. For any of you who might have completed this previously, I honestly don't really see that it's worth reinstalling. Hopefully they're going to bring some of us back with the paid DLC that they've got coming out whenever that comes out. But there's definitely going to need to be more than this to continue having us coming back and playing. But again, just wanted to highlight some of the things that they put out in Dredge's most recent major update, version 1.2. Have a great day, everybody. 
Hopefully you were able to take something from this video. Give it a like, drop any questions or comments that you might have, and consider subscribing to Friendly Fre Frenzy Games' YouTube channel, where we've got a bunch more gaming content on games like Dredge, Terraria, Teardown, and more.